So if you're watching this video as just a standalone video, this video is being done as a, a part of my course. And so at the beginning of my course, I said, I, I am not a cold email copywriting expert. And I, I don't pretend to be. Um, what we really specialize in, and I hope you've seen other videos to, to see this, is what we specialize in is data and how we can segment your market by using better data, data which makes your messaging better and, and all those things. The person that I get a lot of creative content from and a lot of uh, advice from on cold email is Josh Braun. And so we're on Josh Braun's website right now. And the reason I want to bring this up is because one, if you're doing cold email, you should just be following Josh Braun. He's got like 200,000 followers. He's really great at this stuff. And he in particular talks a lot about cold email copywriting. And so what I wanted to do was basically go through his blog and you can see we have all of these tabs up here. And I just want to talk through the lessons that he has taught. In no ways am I trying to say that this is my information. It is not my information. It is Josh Bronze, and I am just reacting to it. And I am telling everybody here that maybe you should even stop this video and you should go to Josh Bronze content because it is so good. Um, we're just going to quickly like run through this. And if we take 20 minutes to kind of just react to everything, that's the intention of this video. And so he has this blog before and after cold emails. And so uh, basically all this is just about like – how you can show people what it, like it would look like if they were to implement your product and what the before and after would be. So in the example, he uses an example with Phone Ready Leads. Phone Ready Leads is a company that they basically are dialing all the phones to tell you who connects and who doesn't. And so uh, you would go from a message where you're basically like, hey, do you want like Phone Ready Leads? Like we can do it. But what Josh is saying here is, Hey, John, looks like your SDRs are cold calling uh, directors of benefits. We could generate this with AI super, super easily. So we would just first know that they have SDRs and then we would um, use AI to figure out what title they're usually selling to. What are you doing to increase your connect rate? I love this sign, like this line. Josh Braun calls this poking the bear and maybe this will come up in one of his blogs. Uh, but it's basically like getting them to think about, you know, what are you doing in order to, to help with this stuff? 1800 plus SDRs are having eight to 12 conversations and schedule one to two meetings for every 50 outbound dials. No new tech. This great social proof line. So this is the amount of SDRs who are taking advantage of this. They're having eight to 12 conversations and schedule one to meet two, one to two meetings for every outbound dials. Like one great social proof, but then two, these numbers are amazing as well for people who run outbound dialing teams. No new tech. Again, this is showing them like you don't have to implement like a whole new software to get all this done. We tune up your call script and identify which benefit directors are most likely to pick up the phone. Want to run a free test. Awesome, awesome offer here to offer it for free. But then he's sending this image to show what the before looks like with most people's data. So their, you know, connect rate is one, two, three. Two out of 50, I would assume. I assume this is 10. This is two out of 50. And then the connect rate over here is like, you know, a third. And then they're already booking meetings as well. And so, yeah, just. One, I, I just really love this email, got a great poke the bear going, great social proof, and then a freaking great offer of running a free test. Re um, you know, the Josh Braun is the goat for, for a reason. Let's move on to the next one. Henry's cold email, pop quiz. Why did I respond to Henry's cold email? Okay, so here's the email. And so I'm not gonna, I wish we could, we could put this down. Hey Josh, subscribe to your email list a few weeks ago. I've been doing digital marketing for eight years. I have a few unconventional ideas that might, that might goose sales of your badass, I guess, grow sales of your badass guide without offering discounts. Okay, so obviously this really fits into, now you wouldn't be able to automate this, but this really fits into um, that idea of like, if you were to manually reach out to somebody, what's the human thing that you would say? This is a very human email. I have no thought that they've automated this, but it would be tough to kind of automate this. Um, well, except for saying subscribe to your email list a few days ago, a few weeks ago, we'd be able to automate this part because we could use AI to find out their badass guide, uh, like what products that they sell. Uh, but anyway, I don't get paid unless you make more worth batting around a few ideas. Henry, not sure if it's fit for you, but several course creators I'm working with are seeing 10 to 12% month over month boost in sales. Okay. I, without this, with just seeing this, I was even going to say, I don't see any social proof, but love how in the PS line, they put the social proof. So again, Josh Braun subscribed personalization. Great. Don't get paid unless you makes more. Um, Josh Braun calls this the zone of resistance. So like you're, you, instead of being like, oh, they're going to charge me $10,000 for this, you know, don't get paid unless you make more. That's amazing. 
Not sure if it's a fit, also lo- lowers the zone of resistance. Uh, so Josh Braun, when he talks about this, again, you want to talk like a human, like the, it, by just throwing out to people and saying like, oh, you know, we can do all of this for you and it's great. And, you know, we, there's nothing wrong with our product and we guarantee an ROI and all of this stuff. People like that just sounds like a salesperson. And so it sounds way more human to just be like, oh, hey, like not sure if there's something here, but we'll see. Like I said, impact and social proof. A few unconventional ideas piques curiosity. What I so I like this too, but what I don't like about this is if I were to email somebody and say, "Hey, I've got some unconventional ideas for you." My first thought is, if you had unconventional ideas, why don't you just send them to me? So what I like to do sometimes is I'll say, like, I had some unconventional ideas for you. If I made a Loom video going over those ideas, would you take the time to watch it? So that then I'm like asking to make sure that my time is going to be worth it. Um, that's the way I think about it. It's just because like I said, I don't like it when people say I had a few unconventional ideas for you because then it's like if you had ideas, why don't you just send me the ideas? Um, of course, uh, this is not a hit and run. We're in this together. I love that. Casual writing. Oh, yeah. Casual writing is probably the biggest thing here. So again, it, obviously the Josh Braun's blog, uh, my two cents is just on this part. But again, Josh Braun nails it with this one. Be cheeky. Let's look at this. Being cheeky isn't appropriate because I sell to C-suite. Let me move this in too. Um, Ah, my video is blocking. Being cheeky isn't appropriate. Humor isn't appropriate for medical professionals. My take, the C-suite and medical professionals are people. They all like it. John, you don't have to wait. Here are a few colds. You don't have to wait three days to reply. How long have you gone so long without responding to me? I'm a delight. Awaiting your fair but stern reply. This one I like. So these other ones, I don't uh, – here, I'm going to just give my take on this. Josh Brown is obviously the GOAT, but awaiting your profanity-filled response, that one's kind of funny. Uh, see, I agree with this. If you can make somebody smile, you will increase your response rate. So I totally agree with this. The only – so I guess what I kind of don't like about these emails is – um. I, I'm, I'm a believer in Orrin Claff's style of uh, never be needy. And like you as a salesperson are here and then they're up here. Like your, your status is not aligned. And what we need to be doing is aligning our status as much as we possibly can in order to be on the same playing field as them. And so um, how have you gone so long without responding to me? I'm a delight. That That's kind of something that like somebody desperate would say. Like I, I see like the CEO of Ford would never say that to the CEO of like Amazon. So um, yeah, I, like – Eh. awaiting your fair but stern reply i like this one a lot and actually i think i'm gonna start implementing this one um awaiting your profanity filled response i think this might make them laugh as well um so as follow-ups yeah i kind of like these but so in my opinion when you're following up with people the biggest trap that people get into is they're not trying to close that status alignment you're like just exuding desperation and uh so yeah that's my only thing here on on these follow-up emails One thing that kills cold email response rates, we help RevOps claim the power of incentives with a platform built for revenue-focused teams. Oh, formal writing. Okay. Cause cold email. If other cold emails are written like that, this must be the way it's done. The cure, say it casually. Yeah, I would definitely agree with this. I came across your work through our... No, I came across your name through our work with Pete BizOps at Gong. He cut down commission inquiries by giving reps visibility into how calculations were made. Since you have 100 plus reps too, thought you might be interested. Do you see the video of BizOps team getting pay account? What do you think? Have a Great. Yes, we could take. Great. See, yeah, again, like, yeah. Um, so with all of these, again, I love super, super short emails because, you know, when you get to the point and like, it's got social proof, it explains why you're reaching out. You know, like people, it, it's so easy to say yes to this. And so with these super casual emails, I really like these. To be honest, in my agency, I've like suggested these to customers and, and they don't like it. Uh, personally, I love these emails. And, and like another one that I'll add on that he didn't state in here is something like, um, actually like Jed Marley showed this one to me. So it'd be like, hey, Jed, uh, shortest email you're going to get all day. Um, have you been thinking about how to come cut down commission inquiries by giving reps visibility into how calculations were made. Boom. Um, and then maybe put in the PS line saying something like you have a hundred plus reps. Oh, like we're helping Pete at gong. Saw you have a hundred plus reps too. Thought you might be interested. And so it'd be a super, super short email signature and then a PS line to show your social proof. So it's like a 40 word email altogether. 
And so, uh, yeah, of course, formal writing is definitely going to kill things. You definitely want to keep it casual. Again, it's always thinking about one, how do we make this person worth this person's time? And two, how do we say it like a human would say it? And we don't put our, our marketer hat on. Um, okay. So let's write a good cold email. We need a person. What's the job to be done? Who's currently doing it? Which results in all right, so this is a good framework. Okay, so let's take a back, step back. So basically he's saying, okay, first we need a customer. So who are we targeting? What job, like what problem are we trying to solve, right? They need to trim their hedges. What are they currently doing to trim their hedges? They're using a pair of garden shears and snapping off tree branches that hang over the fence. What's the problem with their current solution? Uh, what are their other solutions? What are the problems with those? Okay. Our solution. Okay, great. And so basically, this is a good framework that anybody could kind of fit into. And actually, I'm going to think about maybe using AI with with this as well, where now we have this framework of, of okay, like now we know all of these things about our message, what's going to be the result? Okay, hey, Josh, honestly, now did you spend your youth dreaming about someday spending your Sunday afternoon trimming trees on Marbella Drive? Okay, so this is like, there are other solutions here, right? Like what, or like what they're currently doing and what's the result of that. So basically saying like, you're spending your time on this. You shouldn't spend your time on this. 10 million homeowners use cordless mini soft for, to trim five trees in 30 minutes, 6.5 hour charge, no hundred dollar per tree landscaper worth a peak. So obviously this is like a B2C play, not something that we would normally actually send, but this looks really interesting because it combines everything into a super, super short message where this, this, uh, what I like about this line and something that we don't talk about enough is um, this is really honing into the emotions of the person. So you're basically telling them like, hey, when you dreamt about buying a house, did you think about all of the Sunday afternoons you'd have to spend trimming trees? Of course not. So you're like leaning into what they thought buying a house would be. And, you know, I guess they're like childhood and their emotions and things like that. And then we're getting straight into the social proof. Awesome. And it's straight into the social proof. And then we're also doing the without thing. And so um, oftentimes they get pitched where it's like, you know, oh, we're a landscaper and we could take care of your hedges. And so you, then you're like pushing that solution away to be like, oh, you know, those landscapers, they're going to charge $100 per tree. That's crazy. So now you can just pay, what is this? $79. And then you could cut five trees in 30 minutes. So then we're like diving into that. And so again, I just another great example. I have a great email. Here we go. Hey, Josh, sorry to barge in. Have you considered repurposing your videos for TikTok so you can expand your reach beyond LinkedIn? Great poke the bear question. Alex Ramosi used our service to grow from zero to 45,000 followers in three months without lifting a finger. Amazing. No, no worries if you're too busy to reply. I know life as a solopreneur and triathlete can get pretty hectic. Given out, no, I'm not too busy to reply. Feels human. Love your snakes. Okay, great. And so again, I actually think this is one of the best frameworks that we're going to go over with Josh's stuff because um, this is so relevant to so many other people. So calling out negatives diffuses negatives. Um, Josh Braun is a huge follower of, um, oh my gosh, the guy who wrote the book, that FBI, Chris. Now you all on YouTube are going to make fun of me. Yeah, the negotiations expert, the ex-FBI guy, Chris something. I'm so sorry. Hey, Josh, sorry to barge in. Awesome. Have you considered repurposing your videos? All right, so that poke the bear question. There's so many ways that we could use this, right? Like you could use this poke the bear question. Then we've got a great social proof sentence here. And then, you know, a nice. So I guess this is interesting because the call to action is actually up here where we're saying like, have you considered doing this social proof? And then just kind of saying like, there's no CTA here of like, you know, want to have a call or anything. So that's one thing that usually we have a CTA in our emails, but the CTA is up here and you kind of flipped it on its head. So again, just reacting here. I, obviously, I think that this is a pretty good email because I like Josh Braun's stuff. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next one. All right. So this is an email that landed. Oh, it seems like we'd have to watch the video. We have a lot of these to get through, so we're going to keep going. Biggest cold email mistake. Let's see. It sounds like what they already have in place. Okay, so this is really true. Reaching out to, they're making, they're getting from A to B without you. That's true. So they already have a way of solving this. 
Josh, have you considered using a service to amplify your videos on TikTok so you can reach beyond LinkedIn? Several creators use my service to grow their followers from zero to 3,000 in a few months without lifting a finger. Worth exploring. Either way, keep up the killer content. I enjoyed your two cents on viewing objections as something to understand rather than overcome. Oh, reach beyond LinkedIn. Okay, yeah. So um, what I guess his A to B is like he already creates content on LinkedIn. He doesn't need anybody to help him create content on LinkedIn. That's his job to be done. But he isn't on TikTok. So now he would help somebody go from A to B on TikTok. And he wouldn't have to lift a finger because he's already producing the LinkedIn content. Yeah, so this one's definitely another good one. This seems like it would be a video. Okay, this is a good one to go over as well. Write cold emails with an eraser. So this is the beginning and this is what he turns it into. And so let's talk about how he went from you know A to B. Hi, Josh. These days, your first page of Google is essentially your business card. A simple Google search can affect how your business is viewed in the public eye. Information spreads quickly and the front page of your search results might be full of links and stories that damage your reputation. Many com- potential clients do their research before making a decision and a single negative review can determine whether or not the client walks through your doors. Erase.com combines content removal, reputation monitoring, and SEO into an effective online reputation management solution. Let me know if you'd like to learn more. Okay, so obviously very wordy. And so it's very obvious to go from like A to B and like how he's going to shorten it. But let's see how he does. Hey, Josh, noticed a negative review from Mario's on page one, which typically drives uh, 22% of prospects away. Restaurants in Boca are using a lesser known approach to permanently remove negative online content. No upfront costs, only pay for results. Worth exploring. Okay, awesome. So... One, we went from all of this, like these lines up here to basically be like, look, I already know that you have this problem because you have a negative review on page one and then showing me the data of why this matters. And so then social proof of restaurants already using this in Boca. And then the really interesting part, no upfront costs, only pay for results worth exploring. So now they did the homework of why you need this, not explaining like, oh, okay, like, you know, it's your business card and you need to be thinking about this stuff. It's like, no, this is already affecting you. And I know it's already affecting you. Here's the information of how it's already affecting you. When we work with our clients, we, I call this problem sniffing. Um, Jordan Crawford came up with that name and I guess we use it together. And so problem sniffing is when you use data to try to reach out to a prospect. Um, and so then you could say like, Hey, I think you might have this problem. Um, and that's why I'm reaching out to you today. And so this is what we have here. We have ways to do this automatically. So if I were to do this negative review thing um, automatically, what I would do is I would use, I would scrape Yelp and I would, uh, so you can do this in Clay, but you can use the Yelp integration to find reviews on a business. And then you can um, sort them by the lowest, res- like the lowest rating to the highest rating. So the first one you would get is somebody being like, oh, I hate this business. And then for whatever reason, and then we can AI generate this line on top here so that we'd be able to run this play completely automatically. And then this we can run automatically as well, where you just say restaurants in and then location. This is interesting because he lives in Boca Raton. And so we could also use AI to normalize the location into what people say. So this is a very Florida thing. Um, I lived in Miami for a year. Nobody calls it Boca Raton. They all call it Boca because there's no other Boca. And so it just makes sense. So this is really interesting how we'd still be able to AI generate this email completely, even though it looks so freaking hot with that first line right there. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, I, I again, the point of this video is to really bring light to Josh Braun's content. In a lot of ways, I agree. Not many things to disagree with here. Everyone should check him out. All right, features versus benefits. Um, Okay, let's move on. Not a whole lot of examples there. Less hype, more poking. Don't say this. Lose 50 pounds in two weeks. Build a million portfolio in 60 days. Increase signups by 10x. Say this. Are you open to a different perspective for losing weight without dieting? How are you protecting your portfolio against market downturns? Have you considered using Finfluencers on TikTok to reach young and new customers? Okay, so I actually have a lot to say about this too. Sometimes, this doesn't happen often. But sometimes people have an offer that's too great. And I've seen their case studies and there are legitimate customers who genuinely got the result that they are looking for, but it does not sound believable in the cold email, which is is crazy to think about. And so sometimes, like one time we had a customer who said like they were doing tax benefits, like, so basically they would work with people and if they were making a million dollars a year, they would be able to save them on their taxes. The last person they worked with legitimately, I saw the paperwork, legitimately saved $112,000 on their taxes because of this new rework of the the tax plan. 
But we can't email CEOs and say, oh, the last person we worked with saved $112,000 because that doesn't sound believable at all. And so I so, so, so agree with this less hype, more poking idea because sometimes like you got to remember it from a cold email, everybody, like there's so many people who have lied to them in the past. And so when it's too good, then they're going to think, oh, okay, this isn't true at all. And so then like maybe you could save that for your follow-ups and even say that it's crazy. But in your first email, putting these poking questions in, again, super, super agree with this. Uh, killer copywriting. All right. I mean, let's look at this. People don't care about your revenue. They care about their revenue. Gravy has generated over 401 million. Gravy has returned over 401 million back to our clients. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, they, they seriously don't care. Always write in their perspective of how you'd be able to help them. They don't actually care about everything that you've done, which is funny. I see like lead generation agencies all the time being like, oh, we've booked meetings with Apple and Costco and, you know, open AI. And I'm like, okay, like, why does that matter? Like what revenue did you affect f- like for your customer? And so anyway, is your message crispy or generic? Okay. Imagine this scenario. You're out of warranty. MacBook Pro starts to crash frequently. You do a Google search over 6,000 computer services, 2015, over 6,000 MacBook Pro. Oh yes. Okay. So don't do this. We reduce shipping costs. Do this. Hi, John. We're seeing that many e-commerce companies in the pet space are doing at least 5K per month in revenue are overpaying for shipping by 10 to 15%. One of the reasons is this worth exploring for Animal Farm. Either way, I bought a cucumber melon shampoo for my dog and I love the smell. Okay. So you wouldn't be able to automate this because you can't lie about like actually buying a product, but definitely agree here. If you can segment your list into a way that it's like, okay, I know these people fit on multiple areas. They're an e-commerce store who's in the pet space that's doing at least 5K per month. Now I can say all these things to these people. So this is really, this actually really isn't a copywriting um, problem to solve. This is more of a list building problem to solve. So how can you stack all of the reasons of why you're reaching out to this person? So are they an e-commerce store? Do they do support by phone? Do they make this much revenue? Are they in this space? And now your list might have gone from 10,000 e-commerce stores. And now all the people who qualify for this is now like 400 e-commerce stores. But now you can say something super, super relevant to all of them. So of course, again, agree a lot here. Um, This isn't cold email, so we're just going to move on. Why loss aversion motivates prospects to respond? The cigarette box message perfectly illustrates why humans hate loss. It's called loss aversion. The larger the potential loss, the more motivated prospects will be taken to action to prevent it. The lesson, you start more conversations with prospects if you shine a light on what they might lose rather than what they might gain. You will gain five years of your life if you quit smoking. You will lose five years of your life if you don't quit smoking. Okay, yeah, this is, you know, again, this is something you have to really think about. And this is like case by case basis. And I can't even really think about anything right now. Um, When I was selling clay.com, one thing that we would do is when we cold email people, we would say, you know, instead of your, instead of talking about how many more people you'd be able to reach out to, we would say, you know, now your reps, um, your reps are currently losing four hours a day on manual research. We can replace all of that manual research time. And so that was the, um, like, yeah. So instead of gaining their time back, we were talking about like, you're losing so much time on this, like replace it. So I definitely agree with that here. And there's kind of a cold email example. Killer copy that made me buy. Sleep the extra 15 minutes is about what I can do rather than what the product can do. Sold. Okay, great. So this is all about them and what, and again, this goes into like selling a transformation rather than the cause, right? So sleep the extra 15 minutes. I have no clue what that is, but I'm pretty sold at this point, right? And so I have no clue what it actually does, but oh, okay. So they're doing the prep for you. Oh, so sleep the extra 15 minutes because they're making the breakfast for you. Okay, great. Like I agree too. Because now you're you're giving the transformation, right? Like people, they can make their own breakfast. That's fine. But you're telling them that they could sleep extra 15 minutes. Of course, love it. Sell the transformation. Uh, all right. I love this vintage Porsche ad. Honestly, now, did you spend your youth dreaming about someday owning a Nissan or a Mitsubishi? Uh, there's still only one car that feels and performs like a Porsche 911. It's one sports car. Great. Okay. It's visceral. It makes them think, honestly, did you spend your youth dreaming about this? Example for Captivate IQ. Okay, I like how he does this. So we have a B two B example. James, honestly, now did you spend your youth dreaming about some about someday hard pass? Oh, hard pasting entire Excel pages into Google Sheets and then manually making judge, uh, adjustments one sheet at a time to determine payouts. Wow. Okay, I really like that because so we have a customer right now who they do like automated customer support. I wonder if we could send a message 
where we could like talk to customer support leaders and then say like, honestly, did you dream that when you were a kid, did you dream about answering customers calls to tell them where their order is? Or would you want to automate that? Oh, I really like that. So yeah. Um, now this one, again, it could get a little risky. Like when you're playing with people's not, we're not playing with people's emotions here. It's cause like there's no manipulation here. Um, but you definitely like some people might genuinely find it like, uh, fulfilling so of whatever job they're doing so you want to make sure that whatever is not fulfilling over here uh we take care of i really really love this example that's really great rules follow the structure okay great be crispy or specific yep all right so we got to be specific stay away from generic words like optimize streamline save time save money yep great focus on what sucks about how people are currently getting the job done not your value props solutions have no value without a problem people can relate to i really agree with that all right last one 25 minutes in, yeah. The cheat code for lowering resistance on a cold call. Okay, great. Version A, revolutionize your work with the best project management tool designed for all teams. Okay, with already reading his stuff, it's like too fluffy. Like, here's another thing that I think about cold email. I, and I know this is Josh Braun stuff, but I'm just going to insert my thing. Another thing we work on with our clients is like, what can you say in a cold email that your competitors can't say? Every project management tool on the on earth can say this. Like there's no project management tool that can't say this. So obviously we go to version B with Basecamp, everything's organized in one place. You're on top of things, progress is clear and a sense of calm sets in. Okay, a little bit of emotion uh, messaging with a sense of calm. You're on top of things, progress is clear. Um, so I guess the only, like, and I, I hate saying that I could improve Josh's messaging because I like, and, you know, Josh didn't write it with this intention behind. He's obviously writing this blog post and I'm sure he knows this. I, he definitely knows this for sure. I would just change this with a little bit of like, you know, what particular thing can Basecamp do? Like in this this one over here where he says, you know, did you dream about someday hard pasting Excel pages into Google Sheets and then manually doing things? I totally, totally agree. Um, what we could do is like with Basecamp, what's that thing that Basecamp can do that ClickUp can't do and then talk about it that way. Um, but that's not the point of Josh. I'm sure he would have said the same thing. Lower converting what the product is. Online photography courses for students, parents, enthusiasts, and pros. Take better pics of your kids in 15 days. Boom. Love that too. Transformation. Remember, sell the transformation, not the process. Transformation, transformation, transformation. Here are three ways to read your customer's mind. Podcasts where a customer is interviewed. Listen for the words the customer uses to describe the before story or what sucked before people gave you money. Oh, there's more. Level two, potential problem. The reason for my call is that many VPs of sales are relying on SVPs or a bottom methodology to prepare forecasts or a bottom-up methodology to report your forecasts. Okay, true. Level three, poke the bear. My favorite. I love it when he does this. If you don't mind me asking, how are you forecasting today? Poke the bear question. Oh, no, this is the poke the bear question. Sorry. Is it a human-derived process where reps forecast to directors, directors of VPs, and VPs forecast to SVPs, or are you also using machine learning to predict more accurately? What a great predict the poke the bear question where it's like, you know, look, I think you're probably doing it this way. Are you using machine learning to do it more accurately? I really like this one. Case studies, looking for quotes that describe the before story. By way of example, here's a quote from a customer that switched to Cavity AQ. Determining payouts involved a lot of manual data entry. Great. And here's how the customer quote converts into a quote. We often hear that determining payouts involves a lot of manual data entry. Great. If you don't mind me asking, how are you calculating and running payouts today? Is it manual process or is it automated? Because a lot of people are going to be in that manual process. And as soon as you say, is it automated? They're going to think to themselves, oh, wait, this can be automated. How can we do that? Finding the first spot. When did you first start looking for something to solve your problem? What triggered you to think about this? Tell me about what you looked for to solve your problem. Yeah. And this is, this is a good formula to build poke the bear questions as well, because oftentimes we find those are pretty tough to build. But anyway, um, this is just like all of these blogs that I brought up of Josh Braun. Really like his stuff. I think everyone should check him out. This was just kind of my two cents on some of his stuff. And I hope you guys learned something from reading his examples as well.